Hi there. Welcome, welcome. Come right on in. This is Home Keepers. I'm Martha Lane Rippey. We like to talk about your home, my home, everybody's home. It's just such an important subject. So if you've not been here before, just come right on in. And uh, I always like to give a good shout out and hugs to our regular viewers. Uh, God bless all of you. And we like to deal with all those things about life, you know, and, and uh, they, every one are affected by the home or do affect the home, either way. So glad to have you, and we're going to talk today about, you know, a spiritual journey um, that sometimes circumstances pushes you into, and it affects everything in your life, everything in your home. And my guest today is my longtime assistant, and you are still asking about her. Wanda Bascom used to uh, do the cooking on the show with me, and some physical problems uh, brought that to a halt, but you still you always want to know how Wanda is, so you're going to know today. So group, let's welcome Wanda Bascom. Yes. I think that is... Um, Maybe the fourth time we've asked for applause on this show in many, many years, but she is much loved. But we're talking about her spiritual journey, and I am so confident to bring this to you because I've lived it with her. I've seen it up close and personal, and I have seen the kingdom of God at work in a way that I never have, maybe because I see it on a daily basis. But you are going to be inspired and encouraged by this uh, great, great lady. And you know she's great because a lot of you are still asking about her from time to time. So Wanda's my guest, and I don't want you guys to applaud, but I know that inside you're applauding that we are going to fix a turtle pumpkin pie. And I can hardly wait to taste that one, and I'm going to join Stephanie for that. But before we do, I want to, again, this is probably the last time, offer you the book, God's Thrifty Extravagance. Boy, we have such, a, such an extravagant God, but he's not wasteful. And you can see that in so many ways, so many areas of life. And this book catalogs all the scriptures about giving. And as I said on another show, if the Bible deals with a subject, to me, that's, that's it. That's the final word on it. I'm not going to go anywhere else to look for information. It's all in this little book. And this is a thrifty offer because we're offering it to you for a gift of $10 plus a little bit of shipping and handling. And we'll get it right out to you. So if you'd like to use your credit number, that number is on your screen. And it's one 800 229 or the address is there as well, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we will get it out to you because Stephanie and I, we're always trying to help people with their finances. Yes. Because um, you've helped people just telling your story, you know. So yes. this looks really good. But I was just thinking, uh, you have a daughter. How old? 18. Oh, my. I'm thinking 16. She just turned 18. Well, she's a really good girl. Yes. And she hasn't dated a whole lot, has she? No, was not really. We've fact, been lucky. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I don't have time for the drama. I'm like, okay, oh, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking all of this when Dr. Clark was here. Uh, we were talking about how forward girls can be dating, mm -hmm. and the boys have to, Christian boys probably have to say no sometimes. Yes. But you know what I did when Meredith started to date? Her daddy had died, and I was concerned because I feel that a daddy can look at a guy and know mm -hmm. things that a mother can't. Mm -hmm. So her first date was with this guy from the church. They went with a group, and I thought, you know, we got to put some ground rules here. So I just looked at him, and I said, if she's not home at 1030, I'll kill you. <laughs> and he looked at me like, oh. and she was home and at I'm 10. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she was home at 10. Yep. So... Um, I'll just throw that out it's if you want to use it. It's very similar to what I say. If you hurt her, I will find you, uh -huh. and I will yeah, kill you. Yeah, <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. Um, but Alexis, boy, she's getting ready to go to college, isn't yes. she? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. She's a beautiful girl. She's been on the show before, so yes. you got a good girl. You've done yes. a good girl. Thank you. All right. Okay, um, so let's start off this recipe by saying you're welcome. <laughs> because this is a good one and you're going to want gonna it. You're going to thank us for it. <laughs> okay, so I have two um, packages of vanilla pudding. Do you want to tell them what I'm doing? Yes, you have caramel sauce and you are covering the bottom of a graham cracker crust. Oh, you're supposed to completely cover it? Well, it's just, they say a quarter of a cup, but what do they know? Yeah. So you can just, yeah. Cover. I love that caramel taste with the salt things oh they do. Oh my gosh. You know? And then I have a cup, a cup of a canned pumpkin here that I'm going to put in. And then we're going to put a few pecans on yeah, this. Yeah, you're putting nuts. And then I have a cup of milk I'm going to put in here. And I have some cinnamon and nutmeg I'm going to put in. A teaspoon of cinnamon and a, a half And you notice we're not adding any sugar to this. No. <laughs> right. This is good. So, this has to be good, good for you in some form. <laughs> Pumpkin? Yeah. Has anybody ever looked up the properties on pumpkin and very healthy? I'll just say very healthy. Okay, okay so nutmeg, cinnamon, and nut. Yes. So I'm just gonna mix this mm -hmm. up real quick. So you've put in. We, you know, we just bought the. You can uh, of course make a graham cracker crust. But yeah. We bought but a you graham can, cracker we crust. We bought them. So I have vanilla pudding. Should we tell them the truth? What I have? Yeah, because whoever bought this stuff made a mistake. <laughs> bought banana <laughs> because the, the box color looks like vanilla so don't read the box just grab the yellow box so we no. got two vanilla and mixed it so we got one of banana one of so it's that's the way you get yes, creative so it's turtle banana pumpkin pie but we're just calling it turtle pumpkin pie and necessity is the mother of in invention and it's so. actually very very tasty we like that yeah we so. tasted it okay so there's that i have a cup and a half of cool whip and yeah, I'm just and you know that's that a nice in. consistency, but I don't do Cool Whip at home. No, because you do, do the fancy. I, I'm a prude. You, yes, you're blue blood. A Cool Whip prude. When it comes to whipped cream, so I'm just gonna mix this. But in. you can see how easy this is, and oh, how this is super easy. It would be. I'm taking with this. I am taking this to a, a, a weekend. Are you? Yes, we're we're having a family get together this weekend, and this is gonna be one of the things I take for oh, sure. Oh, good. Well, that's a real compliment. Because this is like one of those things. It's like, oh my gosh, she slaved in the in the kitchen yeah. for and hours want them over to believe this. that. Yes, and actually it took 10 minutes to put it Do you it remember together. when the, the our former lieutenant governor was here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We did the cabbage rolls. Yes. And <laughs> Stephanie turned her nose up at them because yes. she said hers are better, and yes. we're going to find well. out. But the lieutenant governor really liked them. Okay, so I'm going to put this in here, and we're going to chill it for an hour. Yeah, you have to chill it before you put the top on, which looks like this. And then we put more Cool Whip on top, we put more caramel on top, and we put more nuts on top. And Susan, look how beautiful Susan made it. Mm-hmm. Very nice. This is so, this is, you want this recipe, I promise. And, uh, you know, when we do stuff like this, remember your portions. That's yes, because Stephanie has a problem that's, with that. That's another thing <laughs> Stephanie has taught us by default. She didn't intend to teach us, but I don't know. Stephanie secret. likes big portions. Mm -hmm. That's why Stephanie has. I think that a after you put issues. the top on this, I might put it back in the fridge just for a few minutes. Uh, Do you really think it's going to make it back to the refrigerator? <laughs> okay, so here's this. Oh that's goodness. what it looks like. And you chill it, and then you put the toppings on. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. Are the angels singing a little bit? The angels are in the room. It's very soft. And it's not I need a moment. <laughs> <laughs> you want to savor the moment. It's not overly sweet. Nice. Oh. But you'll be okay. You'll be I'm okay. taking this up to my office. <laughs> this is going with me. Okay. <laughs> Well, and Stephanie's going to go do that other kid thing, you know, high school. You're doing pictures today. Senior pictures today. Do they still do the class ring? Did we need to order the class I ring. I had to pay for all that myself. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll tell you, when, the, when I ordered the class ring, it was like $75. Oh. They're not $75 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. All right. This is called the uh, oh, turtle, turtle pumpkin, pumpkin pie. Uh-huh. And you want it. I promise. You and want, you, you can it. email us, and Wanda's the one that'll send it to you. Mm -hmm. And if you write to us, we'll send it to you that way. But if you want it, we'd be glad to have it. You can have it. It doesn't cost anything. Now stay. If you haven't met Wanda, you're going to.
If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Uh, you who've been with us a long, long time uh, remember Wanda. And she was on here before. She's been my assistant for, for 14 years? 15? 15. 15 years. Doesn't seem that long. Mm -hmm. But I, I've been telling her for weeks that I wanted her to tell you her story because it's uh, been just, I, it's, it's hard to explain. Hardship after hardship after hardship, and how the Lord is faithful, faithful, faithful. Think of that song. It's in, in times I have, I've not trusted and failed to believe, but you've been faithful, faithful. Mm. Um, Wanda is, number one, a Christian. She's a mother, a grandmother. She is a widow, and she's extremely organized and efficient. <laughs> <laughs> she almost goes into apoplexy, you know, she doesn't get everything done before she goes home. And um, a part of Homekeepers, but I, I've never discussed this with you, but I felt that when you came, um, you were almost like a hurt puppy. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, she knows what abuse is, and she knows what it is to have nothing to be out alone with two teenage boys and um, to watch up close you know what the Lord can do with a, a puppy that's been kicked around a lot and uh, I, I'd like to kind of start and maybe, maybe you can um, refine this somewhat when you met Bill Bascom mm. and married him you were alone with two teenage boys mm -hmm. And he and a kicked a puppy, and Bill yeah. took you on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When we met, it was uh, my brother set, had set us up on mm -hmm. a date, and um, I was pretty upset that my brother did that because I didn't want to be with an older man because I thought he was an older man. <laughs> and I thought, you know, my sister said, he doesn't have any hair either, and I'm yeah. like, great, thanks, Stace. <laughs> So anyway, um, but one of the things that I had asked him about, about eight years into it, I said, what made you know or think for one moment? You'd been single your whole life. And take on two and, teenage boys. And, <laughs> and yet, what made you decide that I was the one for you? Uh -huh. And he said he stood there out by the car that night that my brother had asked us to go, asked me to go to the Van Wazels, what it was. And so I, when I came out the door, he said, the Lord just showed him what my heart was about. He said, you have a diamond, but you don't know what you have because she needs to be loved. She needs to be nurtured. And he says, as with a diamond, you buff it till it becomes shiny. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is your jewel, and she will be the wife that you've always wanted. And like I say, the amazing thing is a man who's never been married would take on two, two teenage boys. That's, that's got to be in the miracle yeah. category and uh, you also told me how when you were first married to him and you realized that you didn't have dinner ready yeah that you were panicked I because was panicked. that was a big problem in the past and uh, he would say honey it doesn't matter and that was mm. just new to you it was a new revelation uh, you know I didn't I didn't have to worry about did I have all the shirts ironed was the house spotless was the food on the table I would panic and, he'd and say, she is spotless. <laughs> and he said, you don't have to worry about that, honey. You don't have to cook if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Wonder, one of the most wonderful men I've ever met in my life. Uh, yeah. Now I want to fast forward yeah. because there was this real gradual walk. You could see the Lord mm -hmm. uh, through Bill a lot yeah. helping you. And then you got a diagnosis that Bill had pancreatic cancer yes and what you did at that point was extremely unusual I remember at the time I because I knew your financial situation a little bit and I, I questioned you know really 
what was this all about? But tell us the story of going to Bethel in California to mm -hmm. a great revival. Well, when we got the diagnosis of the pancreatic cancer, our pastor had mentioned to Bill, you know, there we've heard about a couple of churches that are having some real great healings, and maybe you might want to consider going there. So Bill prayed, and he really checked out the couple of churches, and he really felt like he wanted to go to Redding, California, to the church called Bethel mm -hmm. that's in Redding. And so I said, well, fine, we'll go. So... By all intents and purposes, I can't believe how the Lord worked it out, mm -hmm. but a girl who was renting an apartment from us was leaving the apartment. She, she felt so bad because she was cutting her, but she paid the entire rent for the next seven months, which allowed us to go on this trip. So it doesn't seem logical that mm -hmm. your husband's very, very sick. You board a plane. He's running a fever. A whole continent. From and, and Florida we're going, to California. We're going to California. We know no one, just each other. And I'm thinking, I must be crazy. We must be crazy. Mm -hmm. But our hearts were really about wanting to seek God. And that's, that's why we went. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, uh, in, in Bethel, uh, we would spend hours in the prayer house. I don't know if you want to show the pictures of the prayer yeah, house. Yeah, uh, I think we have a picture of the, uh, of the church there. And this revival yes. has been going on for years. For a long, long time. This is Redding, California. That's it. That's and, Bethel uh, Church. Bethel Church. I understand mm -hmm. that the newspaper there had a huge article not too long ago about all this, and it was very, very complimentary. And what is this? This is the prayer house. And this is where, um, I'm telling you, you go in there, and you just feel the presence of the Lord there. And we, we went there every single day, and we prayed there for hours. I mean, hours. It's like almost 24 7 right it is it's open 24 uh -huh. 7 to anyone mm -hmm. and so when we when we were there I mean how, how can you say what God does in the lives of people yeah. you, you just don't know but when you seek all that God has for you and you know that your life's going to be ripped out you know that your heart's going to be broken mm -hmm. you unless there's a miracle mm -hmm. and so every time the church doors were open we were there we were being prayed for and we we went for so much prayer and I kept saying Bill do you, do you feel healed mm -hmm. he goes no really why don't you try thinking positive he goes I am positive <laughs> I'm positively sure I'm not healed and I'm like oh, okay so but it was it was it was the presence of God there that that drew us and we didn't want to come back. But then mm -hmm. I realized, you know what? The presence of God is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take what we have learned and um, what God has done in our hearts home with us. And we were forever changed. And I believe that that moment was one of the pivotal moments that really prepared us for our journey. Um, that's, that's what I, uh, it's, it's very hard to express, but right. I, I've tried to to you that I've seen the kingdom of God work yeah. because the kingdom of God is within. It is within. And so uh, you came back and and he continued to deteriorate, basically. He did. He went through a major, major surgery, which I was pretty shocked he would even consider going through. And I, it took me four to five months just to get him so he could, you know, eat and get on his feet. And I took care of him around the clock. And that was, believe me, it was my joy and my honor. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have done anything for him. And um, so um, he, well, he did continue to deteriorate, and, right. and um, you finally had to leave here. I did. I took for the remainder of his life. Yep. And if I remember right, he passed away on a Saturday, and you went to church on Sunday, right? Yes. But tell him what you did, though. I, okay, but I want to tell you what he did. Okay. That was really momentous. Oh, yes, yes. The, the yeah. Wednesday uh, morning, um, he, it, it was a really bad night, Tuesday night through the night. It was the worst that we had had. And I, I didn't at that moment realize that today was going to be a changing moment mm -hmm. in our lives. And um, I, I had given him his morning dosage of morphine, and I said, if you can try to sleep, sweetheart, you really need to rest. And so um, I was in the kitchen sterilizing the syringes and stuff for the next time I'd give him the morphine. And um, he said, honey, can you come over here? Can you, can you sit down beside me and hold my hand? And I said, sure. So I went over there and I sat down and I held his hand and he said, I want to pray for you. 
like for me, really, mm -hmm. I should be praying for you. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that, but I thought that. But he did, he did one of the most, one of the greatest things that a, I think a man could do. He realized that he was not going to be able to be in control of his family. Mm -hmm. He wasn't going to be here to help me through anything. Mm -hmm. But he began to pray, God, please bless my wife. Please protect her in her future. God, I pray for my children and my grandchildren. God, I lay them. Here they are at your feet. I give them to you. He was laying his gauntlet down, his mantle down. But what a great place to leave us mm -hmm. at the feet of Jesus. I can't imagine a better place than that. Bill died that Saturday morning um, on the 23rd, the day before my birthday. So our family, uh, on Sunday, we decided we were going to go to church. And another thing that was kind of pivotal for me was Saturday when they took the hospital bed out and he was already gone and left the home. I was just sitting there so numb and so empty. And God, I don't want this day to end. I don't want to move forward. I don't want. It was, it was just like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And so I, I just realized, well, whether I want it to happen or not, Things in life happen that are unexpected, that they're devastating, but either you make a choice to move on or you're going to wither up and die. Mm -hmm. And I knew Bill would not want that for us. But the next day, our whole family, we went to church, and before we left the house, I said, can you just give me just a moment? I, I just need to do something. So I went in my bedroom, and I, I drew out my, my devotional book, and I said, God, do you have anything you want to say to me today? And, he, and I opened it up for that day, which was my birthday. And he said, now is the time. You need to release the possessions of your loved ones and your wow. possessions into my hands, into my care, that I am the one. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. In spite of cataclysmic changes, I will, herein lies your security. If you just rest in me mm -hmm. and if you praise me, you will find peace. Okay. So I closed it up. I didn't cry. I thought I was doing really good. We went to church, and uh, we were standing there, and we were singing songs. And probably the third or fourth song in, they did a song called The Cornerstone. Mm -hmm. But it starts out, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And as soon as they started to sing that song, oh, my, I felt the power of God just come. And he was wooing me, and he was talking to me. And I'm like, I understand. And somehow, and I'm not a real demonstrative person. I didn't want to go up front, but he was speaking to me. And somehow it seemed like I floated up front to the altar by myself. And I was standing there, and I, and I knew it was just me and God. I really didn't notice anybody else around. And I just said, okay, God. I raised my hands, and I said, I, I, I release my loved one into your hands praise you anyway. I praise you in my storm anyway. I'm going to give you thanks even though I don't feel real thankful right now. Mm -hmm. God, I don't understand your purpose, but it's all right with me. And I'll love you anyway. I'll serve you and I'll praise you. Well, going back to what I said in the beginning, uh, this is not the Wanda who came to work for me. Uh, <laughs> not at all. She wasn't the puppy that was kicked to the curb. Now, another part of this journey and uh, we could sure use more time mm. but she promised Bill that she would bury him in New York and she did I mean she didn't stand there why other people did we got some pictures yeah. very moving pictures yeah. of um, Wanda in New York uh, now is that the urn yes this is this is the urn and it, it was a beautiful um, beautiful day well, it, you know what? It's really interesting. It, it was pouring, just terribly pouring. Really? And I'm, we're in the car on the way to the, um, the cemetery. Uh -huh. And I said, God, please, would you just let the sun shine just momentarily enough for me to get, him, to get him married? And my granddaughters remembered that I said that because mm -hmm. the sun came out. Uh -huh. so, and um, there she is. Look at that. I, Girl, I, you are something I else. asked them if I could do this. And uh -huh. the guy said, are you sure? We've never had anybody do that before. And I said, no, it's important to me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, it was I think this was such a wonderful experience for your grandkids. Yes. Uh, that's a grandchild. That's McKenna. And she put some. She and, wanted oh, they to. Loved, they loved their grandpa. She was especially co close to grandpa. And she, she had some major um, 
issues um, mm -hmm. just weeks prior to his death and how Grandpa explained things to her. But yes, this is where he was laid to rest. And my sister said to me, how are you doing? And I said, I'm doing great. Uh -huh. And I said, I feel a release in my heart. Mm -hmm. I can't, how do you explain that? I don't know. But I understand that I... And there's I, Bill. There's a yes, picture. Yes, and there's my wonderful, wonderful husband. I can attest that, God that he's gave one me. of the finest... Yes. One, you know, one the of the greatest husband, mans I've known. One of the best husbands you would ever want to meet. Yeah. And um, mm. Wanda has never done the why me and why mm. now uh, because you guys really enjoyed being together Did. and he was uh, he was really more a father to yes. your sons and grandfather to your grandchildren um, than any blood person might have been the the character of my husband mm -hmm was was huge and you know before he died he said would you do me one last favor he said I will not be able to do this on my own he said but would you buy each of the grandchildren a gift from me yeah. it's their last gift so at the celebration service uh, prior to that I had gone out and, and got them a gift and wrapped it mm -hmm. and gave each one of the grandchildren their last gift from their grandfather and I don't know the man who thinks of stuff like that no, no, he, he but, was very But my special. grandchildren will never forget this. Never. It's a legacy that goes on. And so if there's things that you can learn from going through the darkest moments mm -hmm. in your life, just know that God gives you mm -hmm. a, a spring of living mm -hmm. water, and he fills, it, fills you with joy, and it comes from within. Mm -hmm. It's not something I can make up on my own or I can mm -hmm. do on my own. There are tears. I'm not going to say yeah. that there weren't moments. I've I've cried with her, and there's been a lot of things happened since. But mm. she, the the point of this is she's on top of it, and uh, she didn't start out like a person that would ever be on top of things, and that's why I wanted you, uh, mm. you precious viewers, to know her journey. And I keep going back to this. I've seen the kingdom of God up close and personal. We, we think of, you know, the big meetings and the masses and this, but Jesus mm -hmm. wanted us to have his kingdom within us. And mm -hmm. I've watched that happen. I've watched it develop. I'm so sorry we're out of time, but thank you, Wanda. You're welcome. Thank you. My pleasure. And uh, join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper ever. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.